So I rather violently pulled apart a computer fan only to discover that inside lies a brushless motor. So I looked around on YouTube and I found a few other videos of people making a wind powered generator out of a computer fan. And I thought I might give that a go to see how good it is. So inside you, we can see here the stator and ring magnet. It's a two phase brushless DC motor. Now, because we want to turn this into an electric generator, we don't want any of the brushless DC motor electronics, but I want to keep the circuit board in there for its structural integrity. So I just scratched out all the traces where the stator connects to the electronics on the circuit board. So it has three points of electrical contact, one of which has two wires going to it, which must be the earth or something like that. So let's ignore that earth as we want to use the entirety of all the copper wiring in the motor. If we connect one wire to the earth and another wire to one of the other points, you only use half of the electromagnets in it. So if you have bad vision or something and you can't see those tiny little wires going down into that third earthing contact thingamajiggy, the one you have to ignore, uh, you can discover it with a multimeter. The two points where you have to solder to will have twice as much as resistance as any other two points basically. So solder the wires to those two contacts coming out of the stator. Now if we connect these two wires to an oscilloscope, we can see that when we spin the fan, it is producing an AC current. Hmm, that's nice. But I don't want an AC current, I would like a DC current. So we can rectify this problem with a diode bridge which is four diodes configured like this. If you like, you can also add a capacitor to the output of the diode bridge to sm smooth out that rectified AC output. Then I connected a small LED to the output. Now to get this thing to produce enough voltage to run the LED, it has to be spinning insanely fast. So I usually shove the entire wind powered generator right up to an AC powered fan. To get it to spin fast enough to produce a meager 2.5 volts at 8 milliamps unloaded after it comes through the diode bridge, according to my multimeter. So when I connect an LED to the output of the diode bridge, I can see that it's not burning too brightly due to the abysmal amount of power which is getting through the diode bridge because the fan itself is producing hardly any power. So if I remove the diode bridge, I discover that the LED is a lot brighter. But unfortunately, because it's a diode, a light emitting diode, it's only using half of the waveform that's coming out of the generator. But we can solve this problem by just putting in a second LED and just reversing its polarity. So we have two LEDs and each one will be using either side of the waveform. And that is a lot brighter. Now just a note, the LEDs do not actually pulse on and off in this manner. It's just the way the frame rate of the video camera is syncing up with the flickering of the LEDs. It seems to fade in and out like that. In reality, it's actually flickering incredibly fast. If you don't want anyone to know that you ended up using two LEDs, you can fool everyone that you're using a single light by wrapping it in a vaguely opaque material. Then I reassemble the fan using hot glue. And I found the most simplest way to do the final assembly was to simply shove the LEDs in the same manner I had shown before straight into the computer fan connector. And it's done. So this is a great thing if you want to hyperventilate while producing a small amount of light. I don't think it will do any good holding up to the wind because you would need a pretty powerful breeze. So it's a fun science experiment if you want to waste a computer fan.